Hey, what up fam? It's Joe Mill here back with Keller Miller Q and today we're kicking off the first cook on the old Weber kettle, the 70th edition. We're gonna fire that thing up. I'm gonna get it dirty for the first time. You can check it out with me. It's the 4th of July weekend. We got burgers, we got dogs, we got chicken, Italian sausage. It's gonna be a good one. Come on, let's go get it. Fourth of July team, and as you already saw, we gotta get a little something on that grill. It's about time to get that thing dirty. We're gonna keep it real simple today. I got a, a cast of uh, suspects here that's gonna end up on this grill, but uh, really nothing crazy. Got me some uncured natural beef hot dogs, uh, some chicken Italian sausage that we got over here, some uh, green onion and garlic chicken sausage. Uh, we're gonna throw together a couple basic old burgers and then uh, we're gonna do so. I got some a pack of boneless chicken thighs here. We'll be grilling that up. I'll probably be throwing me together a chicken sandwich and then I'll be using a little bit of the rest of that for the week. But uh, let me uh, get this chicken cleaned up first. I gotta get up out this heat before we melt all of this stuff and then we get this fire going. I'll show you how we're gonna season it up and what we're gonna do. Okay, so we've been over this before. I like to clean up my chicken just a little bit. I mean, truthfully, we out there on that grill, the majority of all that fat and everything will come up off of there, but a lot of times when you're talking about some of these thighs, there'll be some uh, connective tissue, some fattier areas that I don't care for as much. I still don't go crazy. I mean, once you get boneless, that does a lot of taking rid of it or getting rid of a lot of it. And if you go chasing all that out of there, I mean, eventually this thing will fall apart. So really, I just kind of get what's left on the edges, anything that's kind of too loose and scraggling, any big pockets, and then kind of go at it from there. But uh, only thing I'm about to do next is, and I thought I brought it out here, I'm about to grab my Bearded Butcher's Cajun seasoning, a little bit of uh, oil to throw on these babies, and we're going to season these up, and I'm going to throw these right back in the fridge and let them hang out while we get this grill up. All right, so there go that chicken. Didn't do nothing too, too crazy. Hit it up, like I said, you can use whatever seasoning you have. I was gonna do some SPG, some salt, pepper, garlic, nothing crazy, but I wanna give it a little flavor. So hit it with a little bit of this uh, Bearded Butcher's Cajun seasoning. It's a great season. I use this on a lot. I really like it on my breakfast stuff, but I uh, wanted to use it definitely on this chicken. And then um, I'm also gonna be doing the same thing when I do these burgers. I went nice and easy. Didn't wanna go too heavy. I don't want it too salty. And then at the end, I can kinda go to taste ended up hitting it with a little bit of salt just to wake it up if needed um and then as far as your burger just grab this from my local grocery store my old winco nothing crazy make sure you grab you some 80 20 that make you the best burgers that's the best uh meat to fat ratio um these this is about a pound so i mean i'll be making me about a quarter pound patty so at the end of the day chop it in half chop it in half again so i'll end up with nice four big old patties i thought about going eddie murphy style making me a nice big old onion green pepper burger but uh who knows but baby might not eat that so i'm gonna keep it pretty simple i'm about to break this down make it into patties i'll hit it with a little bit of that cajun seasoning as well and then like i said at the end we can hit it with a little salt a little pepper whatever all right, nothing too crazy. Maybe a couple of these patties nice and big for daddy. A couple of these small ones there for my girls. Other than that, uh, pro tip, throw these babies back in the refrigerator. Fire's about to get taken care of now. That'll give these a second to firm up. I hit it with a little bit of that Cajun seasoning too. They smell great already, but it also let a little bit of time for that to marry and come together. And finally, to the old fire, man. I tell you, this is almost bittersweet for me over here. Pardon my root. Yeah. I didn't put too many coals in there. We're gonna be testing this thing out with just one of the uh, sides with coals in it. At the end of the day, I don't need that much heat. I'm gonna be cooking indirect. I'm gonna try to keep this baby a little clean. Like I said, it's almost a little bittersweet because as much as this thing is so crispy and I couldn't wait to get a hold of it, man, I don't wanna get it dirty, but you know. Got to do that. Got to get this cook in. So I'm going to be using a little pan over here. I didn't add no water to it, though I could. But really, I'm just using that over there to catch some of those uh, drippings. It was nice after that burn in being able to use that uh, bottom cleaner and just give a couple uh, shakes and then pretty much be able to get all my ashes to fall down. But uh, nice setup. Let me get this grate on. Let me get everything. Grab my couple of little coals to fill and uh, we'll get to cooking. And let me tell you, we got the old Buick fired up and this thing is rolling, burning clean like always. Pretty much I just uh, did a 
about maybe a third of it I closed down in the damper down below and then um, I'm pretty much gonna be running my vents most of the time wide open on top that way it's got all that room to breathe over the top of my food um, as you can see over here on the dial we're a little inside of 400 which is gonna be great for cooking this chicken hot and fast and those burgers and everything um, and it's kind of good for me to know to kind of get a gauge on how it's going to be warming up this pan, uh, this overall grill with the size of it being a little bigger than my old one. But then also with those little baskets. Only having one of those baskets pretty much full. Didn't really use much charcoal at all. And being able to hit this temperature lets me know when I want to do something low and slow. I won't have to put a little bit of nothing in there and then I'll be able to just add a little bit as we go. So setup is good. Let's slide this baby on back. Uh, love that holder. You see what we looking like over here on this setup. I'm going to get everything cooking and laid out over here. And then we're going to keep on cooking nice and smooth and easy. Let me go grab that old uh, chicken. All right. We got it somewhat loaded up in here. We're going to get it dirty. We're going to get it dirty. I'm going to hold off on my sausages and the hot dogs and everything and let this go for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start this over here on the, the flatter side. Let everything that can stay together stay together. And then we get this thing flipped over. I'll bring you back here in about 15 minutes, something like that. All right, it's been about 19 minutes. I've been in over here and poked in here and checked it out one time. As you can see, I kind of slid the uh, vent more on that indirect side like normal, so it's pulling. But uh, also, you're going to notice that my temperature gauge is a lot higher, and that's because it's directly over where my coals are at. But um, overall, let's open this baby up. I've already peeked in here. Let's get everybody flipped over. Here we go. I swear, this uh, bearded, bearded butcher smells amazing chicken looking nice and juicy and as you can see now it kind of came together that's why I want to do that other side first so these bigger knots and stuff some of this stuff that's not really stuck together too well don't fall apart end up in the bottom of my grill so I'll let this side get a little um now we're about to get everybody flipped over and then uh, we'll get the rest of this thing cooking hey team I want to jump in here real quick and tell you thanks for following along on today's cook if you're new to the channel go to that bottom right corner make sure that you subscribe check out some of the other videos you missed and other than that for everybody else that's been here i appreciate y'all we are over 2000 on to the next goal fourth of july weekend enjoy your family and other than that get out there and cook some there it is everybody got turned over nothing too crazy just some basic old burgers and a little bit of these chicken smells great though i'll tell you that bearded butcher's cajun i like that one I'm going to let this hang out. We only had about 150 degrees all the way around, and then uh, we'll get it done. You already know that chicken got to get to at least 165-ish, and then uh, the burgers will be as you choose, but ground beef, you want to get that stuff done. 34 minutes later, we still rolling good. That one little uh, uh, corner of uh, charcoal is holding on strong, keeping me that good 400 temperature. Well, I'm about to take a quick temperature on this chicken and then what I'm thinking is we should be pretty close to about that 165 mark I'm gonna go ahead and do a little quick sear off over here on this hot station Get a little color on these babies and I'm gonna let them sit off to the side because we will be bringing them back And I just started me a little bit of bacon in the uh, inside that we're gonna be adding on for our sandwich So that way we can time everything up and we'll go ahead and get some of these sausage on Okay, we got everybody here on the party now we got, uh, what is this, uh, green onion, Italian sausage, uh, Italian chicken sausage. And then we just got some regular chicken uh, Italian sausage over there. And then I got me some good old fashioned Hebrew national, some beef hot dogs, 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, this chicken's probably at about 155 ish something roughly here or there. I'm gonna go ahead and try to give everybody a little bit of color along with these burgers right over here on this uh, hotter side. Added about four extra coals over here just to keep this thing going. But uh, we're rolling pretty strong. Uh, I'll leave this thing open. We'll give them a couple minutes on each side. And then uh, we'll get these off of here for now. It's nice that I just remembered that I got these little holders here for my uh, tongs or whatever have you. Give them a little bit of color. I'm going to have to add me a couple more coals over here. This ain't that hot. But there we go. That's about what I'm looking to get that thigh to. Get a little bit of color on there. It's looking nice and pretty. He's coming off. We'll check on all the friends. Give them a little bit of color. Rotate the rest of them in. Then I can close this thing down and go ahead and cook these dogs. Finishing these babies up, man. We looking pretty damn good at the end of the day. Uh, just a little bit of color. Could have went hardcore and gave it that hardcore sear, but uh, I'm trying to keep my chicken nice and pretty. Let me see where this one is at. I got a couple of them. Usually once I get in somewhere like that, there we go. Between one, I'd say 75-ish to 195-ish, that baby's coming off for me. A couple more. 
I'm gonna close this thing back down and finish off these old snossages. And we got them thighs done. As you can see, we got us a little bit of color on there. Nothing too hard on the char, even though I do love some uh, nice dark char, but I kept these nice and pretty, man. We kissed these babies just nice and easy like. Man, I tell you, that old Cadillac over there, or that, oh, no, no, I'm calling it Buick. That old Buick over there rolling smooth and easy. I got them sausage going now. I'm gonna put these to the side. Burgers is already off. And then uh, we'll assemble some things and then uh, family getting hungry. We're going to eat. Then we are finishing off these uh, chicken sausages and chicken Italian sausages and these couple of beef dogs directly over the flame. Get them a little bit of char. Get these babies done. We're going to assemble. I'm losing flame and heat. But it's about that time to eat. And these sausages look about like I like them. A little bit of char on there. A little crispness. We're going to get these babies off here. It's time to bring them buns out, assemble these sandwiches, and it's time to smash. So next, we didn't brought everything back out here. It's up to you. You know, I'm warming my buns a little bit. Got a couple uh, cheese that I like breaking up on there so I don't lose all my cheese instead of just leaving in the whole slice. And then what I did is I took two of these uh, pieces of chicken thighs and kind of laid them on top of each other. And then we just gonna throw a nice piece of cheese. Oh, what am I doing? Almost forgot. Hold on one sec. There we go. Almost forgot a little bit of that bacon to put on there. Put it going the opposite way. Throw me a nice piece of mild cheddar down there. And now I'm gonna close this down and let this melt up. And we're gonna build and assemble. All right, a couple minutes later, we should be good. Oh yeah. Let's get these babies on the bun, assemble, and taste. Finished product team. I am fighting these bugs and running around my yard trying to let them get this sandwich before the rest of us do. But uh, I got everything I want. To give you a little combo of what we got going in here, I took that chicken, got it laying on a uh, piece of lettuce, a couple chicken breasts, put that bacon on there, let that uh, cheddar cheese go ahead and melt right on top. I got Duke's mayo on the bottom. Woo, get out of there, bugs. Duke's mayo on the bottom. Finish it at the top with a little honey Dijon. And then we looking at a rodeo burger over here. We got two of them patties stacked high. A little barbecue sauce, some bacon, and a couple beautiful onion rings. Courtesy of Applebee's. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Get out of there. And other than that, we got our brats. Or I keep saying brats. We got our Italian sausage over here. Chicken Italian sausage. For me, I just like a single line. And I got my Hebrew National uh, hot dog over there. All beef. Easily could have threw a single line of, of uh, ketchup right, on there as well. This house, I told you they was coming to get me with them flies. But um, all in all, I'm so ready to give me a bite. If you didn't catch it already. Double patty. A little bit of bacon. And the onion rings. And then over here you got a little bit of Duke's mayo. The lettuce. Couple chicken thighs. Some cheese. Some bacon. Tomatoes. A little Dijon mustard. Hebrew national. Chicken Italian sausage. And then uh, a green onion chicken Italian sausage. All of them just got straight pepper. We about to dive directly in. I'm going to go for the messy burger first. Squish this thing down. And we're going to see what it tastes like. Here goes nothing. Man. I'm so happy I wasn't on camera for that. That is a big, juicy, messy burger. This is actually the one I want. We're going to take some time on that. Woo! You're going to have to take, some, or take my word for it on this one. That burger is amazing. I need to work on some of that before I can get to that and get to all the rest of this. Share it with the family. First cook is out the way. Can't go wrong. Nice and easy. Fourth of July. Don't do nothing crazy, but you make sure you enjoy your holiday. Peace. Hey, so video is over. These are the Midwestern moments, man, when the grill is going too good and you just want to start grabbing everything out of the refrigerator. Man, I had some corn that I almost forgot about. I'm about to get that done. We're doing s'mores out here. The old Buick has done his damn job today. Smooth and easy. I done had me a little bit of fun for this 4th of July, but hey, you know what time it is. I'm going to catch y'all next week. We're going to keep this thing pumping.